Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the select case statement in Access VBA and how it's a good alternative to the if then statement. Yeah, recently, one of the moderators in my forums on my website, Kevin, uh, let me know that I don't have a video for this yet for select case. I know I cover it in my developer courses. We'll talk about that toward the end of the video. But if you come across a Microsoft Access term and you do a Google search for it or whatever, and I don't show up in the YouTube video res uh, results, you let me know. All right, because I want to know. I want to show up for every search for anything Microsoft Access related for one of my tech help videos. That's my goal. Okay? Okay. So what is select case? Select case is basically just an, an option, an alternative, something else, another tool to have in your box. I personally don't use select case myself. I, I pretty much stick to if then statements, but a lot of developers say that, you know, select case is a lot more readable. It's a lot more concise than if then, and th those are valid points. And you'll definitely see select case in the wild if you go to any other sites and find some code you want to use or whatever. So it's a good tool to have. You want to make sure you understand how it works. So I'm going to cover the basics in this video. Of course, this is a developer level video, so you need to know a little bit of VBA. If you have not yet watched my intro to VBA class and you want to learn how to program, it's not hard to go watch. It's about 20 minutes long, teaches you everything you need to know. I even talk a little bit about if thens in here. And of course, I have a more comprehensive if then video. Go watch this guy too. It's, it's really good to have a solid understanding of how if then, especially with the else if and else branches make sure you understand that before trying to pick up select case all right so here i am in my tech help free template this is a free database you can download a copy off my website if you want to and let's make a little couple uh, like a simple button that we can click on let's pretend we're doing sales reps for states all right we got three sales reps joe covers new york uh rick i cover florida and sue covers everything else let's say we let's pretend we only do business in maybe five states right joe is new york i'm florida sue covers everything else so what we're going to do is we're going to just repurpose this guy here we're going to type in the state okay and i'm going to get rid of the date out of this thing here get rid of the format and we'll call this thing state okay and we'll repurpose my hello world button we'll say find sales rep Oh, repo, find sales repo. <laughs> Wait, someone's beaming in. Hold on. I watched the new Strange New Worlds last night. It was wonderful. Okay, and you can change the button name if you want. I'll just leave it to Hello World button. We'll change it to find sales rep. All right, so let's copy this and paste it. Control C, Control V. We'll slide it down here. And this will put the rep's name in here. Now, normally, yes, no, I, I get it. Normally, you'll put this in a table, right? And you'll, you know, use a DLOOKUP or something else to get. But this is a programming example, so it's not necessarily real world, all right? We're, we're, we're putting our academic uh, caps on today. All right, so we'll call this thing, we'll call this the rep box. All right, so we're going to look up the state, and we're going to put it in the rep. We're going to use an if-then statement first, so I can show you how it works. Ready? Right-click, build event. Here's my cute little code builder. We're right down here. Okay. So with if-then, it would be if state equals New York, then rep equals Joe, right? Else if state equals Florida, then rep equals Rick, that's me. Else any other condition, rep equals Sue, and if. That's your basic if then statement, right? All right, let's save it. Always give it a good debug compile just to make sure, especially if you have to do a bunch of coding, right? We're gonna close this down, reopen it, and I'll put in a state, I'll put in New York, find rep, there's Joe. I'll put in Texas, which isn't in there. There's Sue, right? And I'll put in Florida, and there's me. Okay, so that's simple. We're, we're, we're all on the same page so far, right? That's easy. All right, how do I rewrite that as a select case statement? Well, all right, down here, we're going to delete the if-then first, but I'm going to leave that up there so you can see it. All right, so you start off with select case. And then what are you, what field are you checking? We're checking state. So we're doing a select case on the state field. Okay. Works with variables to whatever you're using. Okay. So case and then New York. Now you can put multiple lines down below, or if it's just one thing at a time, like my previous example, you can just do colon and then rep equals Joe. Case Florida rep equals Rick. 
And then your else statement is simply case else rep is Sue. And is that a little more concise than the previous one? Yeah, kind of a little more readable, a little bit. I'm just used to if thens. I'm used to my TRS-80 Tandy Radio Shack uh, 1980 uh, color computer. That's what I learned on. There was no select case back then. I don't think there was. <laughs> All right, save it, come back out here, click. Whoop, hang on, oh, oh, very important. Good thing I left that in the video, right? End if without block if, what does that mean? Well, I goofed. This should be end select. And if you would have left that there and did a debug compile, the compiler would have caught it, but I didn't, so that's okay. All right, end select. And if I made that mistake, and I've made it before, chances are you'll make the same mistake. So that's why I leave those kinds of things in the videos. Did I plan to? No, that was just serendipitous. All right, let's try it now. There we go. All right, let's put in DD, whatever that is. There's Sue, and we'll put in New York. And there's Joe, okay. Now that's a nice simple example. Select case, uh, it works well with ranges too. Ranges are good. Uh, let's do another example. Instead of looking up a sales rep for a territory for a state, let's do, um, let's do a score and a letter grade. So let's change this to score, okay, score. Like we'll put a number in here, like 75. And then we'll put in here, find or calculate grade. All right, and this will be their grade. A, B, C, D, E, right? Great. Okay, let's go back to our code. Now, with a typical if then statement, what would this look like? It'd be if score is less than 65, then grade equals F, right? Else if score is less than 70, then grade equals D. Else if score is less than 80, then grade equals C. Else if score is less than 90, then grade equals B. Else grade equals A, right? Typical if then with an else if and an else in there, okay? And we'll give it a test. We'll close it up here, save changes, open it back up again, and I'll put in here a 78, and I get a C, all right? Easy enough. How do we write this as a select statement? Well, let's come in here. All right, we'd have select case score. Now there's two ways to do ranges. Um, if you're just dealing with whole numbers, Right, you're not, you don't have fractional decimal components at all. You can use a two statement. So case zero to 64, all right, grade equals F. And again, that, that assumes you're not using negative numbers. All right, you got a zero, you got a 63, whatever. All right, case 65 to 69, grade equals D. And I'll just copy this, right? There's C, B, and A and then end select. We'll just change our numbers, right? We got 70 to 79. We got 80 to 89. We got 90 to 100. And that would be C, B, and A. All right, easy enough. All right, delete this one now. I save it, come out here. Let's try a 67, there's my D. Let's try a 98, there's my A. Let's try a 98.5. Ah, so we get an A, let's see, here's 67.9. Okay, it's working for the D, okay? Um, and it will work if that value falls between that range, but what if we did a 64.5? 64.5. Let me clear this. Yeah, see there? Okay, and this, it gives you nothing because that value doesn't fall between any of those ranges. So instead of writing it like this, you can write it like this. You can say uh, case is, right here, case is less than 65, you get an F. See that? It's just, it's just like an if then you, you go, you know, if, if score is less than 65. Then you change this guy, you say if score is less than 70, see? 
Same thing. Right? Is less than 80. Is less than 90. Case else. You get an A. There's a million different ways to write this stuff. All right. Save it. Come back out here. Now, if we try our 64.5, we get our grade. Okay. Uh, as I briefly mentioned before, if you want to do multi-line statements in here, all right, let's say it's, it's you know, you want to do grade is F, and then you also want to, like, give them a message like you failed punk, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you can do it like this. You can go, you can put it on the next line, say grade equals F, and then status, you failed, like that. You can put as many lines in there as you want to. The colon just basically says we're going to put the next statement on the same line. All right, case else, you know, Grade equals A, status, good, good job, like that. And if you don't know what status is, go watch my status box video. It's where I basically show you how to put this box on here and to just display messages in it. Really easy to do. It's a little, fun, it's a little function up here, or stat, uh, sub up here. Right? It just takes what you send to it and puts it in that status box. Right? It's, in the, it's in the module that you're in if you're working on my database. Right? Just go to the top. There it is. There's more to the select case statement than I covered here. You could, there's all this other things you can do with it. You can use two, like one to four, seven to nine, that kind of stuff. There's, there's other things you can do with it. Uh, I'll put a link to Microsoft's page down below. And of course, I cover select case statements in my Access Developer Level 2 class. We do lots of stuff in here, all kinds of cool stuff. I have select case down here. We do all kinds of neat, nifty things in my developer classes. So unlike these tech help videos where it's just a random topic, whatever I feel like covering that day, whatever questions get sent into me, my developer lessons, you will learn step by step by step in the proper order. All right, today we're going to do this. Today we're going to do if then. Then we're going to do a little select case. Then we're going to do some of this and some variables. And, you know, we go on through it. I got like 40 some levels of it and I, I make a new one every month or two. And um, if you want to learn VBA programming for Microsoft Access the right way, come and check out my developer classes. All right, so that's it. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker 
Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members, Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered you'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.